Enlightenment? No thank you. An Ayahuasca Report by Ashitaka in 2005 on Erwood.org Report on my first Ayahuasca journey, July 2005 Setting Circle of about 25 people with one shaman from Peru at a lodge in a forest. No sitters. Report I was very scared when it was my turn to walk up to the shaman and receive the medicine. He poured half a cup of the thick brown molasses medicine into a small chalice, reached it to me, and said, God bless you. The brew was traditional ayahuasca from Peru. It took me a while to drink. My heart was pounding. My subconscious knew that I was going to have some kind of intense experience, but I also knew that my spirit called me to do this. I just had to do it. So I finally downed it and was surprised that it was easy to stomach and that it did not taste vile as I had anticipated. I sat back, leaned against my backpack, anxious, focusing on my breath, and tried to relax and soothe myself. I am writing this two days after the experience. I was, am, in a really good space in my life, so I said to myself, not to fear my sweet, for some people it's dragons. I had heard stories of people being chased and eaten by dragons on the medicine. For you, it's butterflies. I kept repeating this and started to believe it and become calmer. After half an hour, it took over. First, a familiar feeling, as on ecstasy, of the expansion of my body and overall awareness. But then it rapidly became very intense. I knew soon I would not be able to move, so I quickly went for one more pee break. When sitting on the toilet, I tried to calm down. This was familiar the toilet, the peeing. But then the white linoleum floor came alive. Liquid rainbow light spectacular moving patterns. I had heard but never seen this before. And when I looked at my feet, they were my feet as a four-year-old. I touched them. I don't want to grow up. Rather stay on the toilet and hide. I don't want to face the reality of who I really am. I knew I needed to go back to my seat right now or I would not be able to anymore. Ah, oh, fuck. Here I was again. I had been in this kind of realm slash feeling state before with a 1.5 capsule of MDMA and with DMT, each once. Except this was about three times more intense and I knew it would last at least four hours and only got more intense even. I hated this space slash feeling so much. Why did I bring myself here again? Profound fear, even slight terror, surfaced. I will try to describe this fear. This is the hardest part. There was no reason for this fear. It was irrational. I was simply losing myself, losing control, losing the sense of reality that I am familiar with. Now, this can be a fun thing to experience and explore, if you know it's a dream or an illusion. But the problem here is that life as I know it, and who I think I am, is the illusion. This was waking up to a deeper reality from the illusion, in which I am not separate from anything slash anyone. I had had this kind of experience before, much less intense, and it was blissful. In fact, my intention for this journey had been to lose fear, open my heart, and be able to love myself and everything fully. Infinity was pouring into my being, and I was holding on with my thumbnails not to burst into a gazillion splinters and cease to exist. Part of me wanted to be able to move through this fear, as I had done rather quickly on MDMA and DMT trips, and transform my fear into profound peace and love. Yet it was so intense that I surfed the edge and the whole time holding on for my life, and when I felt a bit more at ease, giving into it a bit again, by closing my eyes and relaxing and thinking of nothing, until the fear took over again. My face was making incredible grimaces. Every grimace was the facial expression of a feeling slash essence. Bashful, shameful, arrogant, angry, devilish, disgusted, ridiculous, ashamed, amphibian, etc. Or simply mentally ill, crazed. I was cross-eyed much of the time. My eyeballs were flying in all directions and my face was doing high-speed acrobatics. This was a way for my body to express all that I am to release the intensity and to learn to love every part of myself. I was aware of every essence that came through and I embraced it consciously. I was outside of judgment. Judgment was nearly impossible because it was all me. 
everybody in the room, every sound, everything that was said to me. And if there was something that I did not like so much, or someone slash sound slash situation in which I had a hard time seeing beauty, then I knew it was because I did not love that part of myself. And this reflection of myself was bringing that particular part of myself which I did not love to my attention. But once I looked at it, I saw and experienced its essence as being part of me and saw the perfection and beauty of that which to the illusioned eye would look ugly. This was a little practice that I kept up and challenged myself. It was easy and wonderful doing it looking at beautiful people, hearing beautiful sounds to experience this as part of myself. But could I stretch it so far as to embrace all of me and love all of myself? When I say myself at this point in the journey, I'm experiencing my human self as a portal to the infinite self. Therefore, it includes me as a human, but goes beyond into the self, which is all that is. And so I pictured the most horrible actions that I could imagine, which I will spare you from here, and searched my heart for compassion, empathy, understanding and love for it slash the beings involved. This part of me. I was able to empathise completely. I felt the terror and lostness these parts of myself were experiencing, how unconscious they were, how scared they were of who they were. In fact, I could empathise and comprehend experientially how much easier it is to kill someone else than to open up to who slash what we really are, to our vastness and lose our sense of existence as we know it. Even human death seemed less frightening to most of us, including me, than total self-realisation. When we kill, we silence our fear of being alive. The more we are conscious, the more we are alive. We desire to kill that in the other that we can relate to, because it is in us as well, but which we are at the same time not ready to own as ours, which we are not ready to wake up to. I understood intrinsically how absolutely everything around us is a mirror of ourself and a teacher to bring light and consciousness to unconscious areas of ourself. People popped into my mind who I have had or have difficulty with, who trigger anger in me, whom I feel have treated me unfairly, etc. And I immediately saw how these people were just playing out a part of me that I did not wish to be aware of, or who represent parts of me that I do not love about myself. I then looked at this part slash feeling and looked into whether I could love it. And it could always be traced back to being afraid and feeling lost and desperately seeking for connection and love. This, of course, brought up compassion, melting this aspect of myself into love, and thus it was no longer ugly. Judgment was simply my incapacity to love myself. It felt like every negative judgment I had on anyone, no matter how subtle, was me slapping my own face. Yet I experienced my utter innocence, because I, the infinite I, am only love slash consciousness expressing myself without being able to stop it. I just am and I am learning and teaching, experiencing myself in every nanosecond with every single movement what slash who I am. In other words, God's self is becoming conscious of every part of God's self. It's all one big blob of existence slash consciousness, learning slash teaching slash experiencing what it is. I know this does not sound very poetic, sorry. I saw the perfection in every part of my life that led to me to come to this point of awareness slash awakeness but I realised with a vengeance that I did no longer want what I had asked for in many prayers. That I may finally end to exist, that I may finally be at peace, that I could not go on playing this stupid game anymore, that I was tired of it all. To lose all fear and only feel love for everything at all times, as my intention was for the journey, would mean the death of my separation consciousness, aka enlightenment. No, take it back, I said. I do not want to wake up. I just want to be okay. I just want to feel good. I will get married. We'll have 2.5 kids. A white picket fence and tend my garden. End of story. Let me go back to sleep. Please. This plea was to my soul. Because I could sense the struggle between my soul and my human self. I have suffered phases of depression. Some so heavy that I lay flat on the floor for hours just praying for death to come and have mercy on me. I understood during my journey how the depression was my soul wanting to move on, but my human self being too afraid or not ready yet to grow up and wake up further. I knew that if I would settle for the white picket fence, refuse to wake up any further, that I would be haunted with depression again. Great, 
So I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place, eh? All I want is to be okay. All I want is to feel fine. Many times during the journey, when the expansion would become too intense, I would ask myself to have compassion, that I was willing to learn and surrender. I had no choice. Resistance just creates more suffering. But that it was too intense for me, and my system was on the verge of panic or shutting down, and I pulled the brakes by watching my fellow travellers and diverting my attention outside. But this would not work for long. It was nauseating, because there was so much going on inside me that was pulling all my attention in. Several times, the shaman came over to blow a sacred liquid over my head and smoke into the top of my crown, which felt like a portal into the universe. He told me to breathe and focus on my breath. But to let anything in from the outside was extremely challenging, whether it was any kind of touch or communication, because of how deep I was inside of myself, and because of the intensity with which I experienced everything. So my mantra became, I just want to be okay. I don't want ecstasy anymore. Everything was too much. Experiencing myself as myself, even slivers of it, at this level was so very intense. I understood the people who only eat bland foods. I wanted to become a black hole in which there was no rubbing of energies. I understood the path of Zen Buddhism, and it became the most attractive to me in that state. Years prior, I had spent some time in a Zen monastery and could not relate to the atmosphere being so dead. Black colours, silence, no creativity, no play, no dance, no strong emotions, just silence and nothingness. Back then, I had seen denial in it. During the journey, however, it seemed like an excellent choice. I hungered for peace and realised that I needed, wanted to start to practice meditation. That would be my way of being okay. I never had a breakthrough from my fear, which, later, after about four hours, turned into subtle, lingering, deep, disturbing, emotional and physical discomfort, in my gut, into peace. I could not fully surrender, because it seemed that if I did, that would be it, merging, and I would never be the same. There would be no more, insert my name here. Game over. A body, but who's there? Now, two days later, I feel very good. And my insight into it is that I can go slowly, transform fear in myself into love and peel off the layers of illusion and wake up slow enough so that I'm not afraid, always with compassion. I know there is no way back. I cannot forget again. Once consciousness is attained, it cannot be lost. A baby cannot be unborn. And my soul will always want to keep growing. I will just ask it to have compassion. I believe that growth can be smooth if I am willing to grow and pay attention to the subtleties. Then, my hope is, that butterflies can be bringers of dawn instead of dragons. In deepest honour and respect of everyone who dares to remember who they are, and love to all fellow seekers.